Hi, my name is Drew Ryan. I'm the manager of technology training at Montgomery College. Today I'm at the Office of Information Technology where we'll be talking to Patrick Feehan, who's leading up the college's cybersecurity awareness campaign. Have you ever received an email from someone you don't know, or perhaps a solicitation from a bank that you don't even belong to asking for a username and password? If so, then you know about cybersecurity. Let's go inside and talk to Patrick to find out how he's keeping our computers safe. I'm Patrick Fian. I am the Director of IT Privacy and Cybersecurity here at Montgomery College. My background is as an attorney. I've been a generalist in corporate law and been inside corporations. Where I developed this interest in privacy and security was my background in risk management. As a risk manager, you learn to define and identify and eliminate the risks that can cause problems to the corporation and to the bottom line. And the same thing is true of privacy and security. It's about managing the risks that can occur to the college and eliminating them, mitigating them. We're on the internet every day, each of us, and, and we're, we're doing transactions with our banks. We get email, we, we surf, we look for news. Cybersecurity is, is about being secure in that environment. Our cybersecurity awareness campaign is called I Am The Solution. Here at Montgomery College, we're trying to emphasize that at each desktop at the college is someone that has a computer, whether it's a laptop or it's a desktop. And ultimately, we can have all the technology and all the protection, all the security technologically that we want, but ultimately, each user is the solution to making sure because the choice is to be the solution to prevent these things from happening. We tend to choose convenience over security, good or bad. And I, and I think of an example as uh, Amazon. When you sign on to Amazon, I sign on that says, hello, Patrick, welcome back. And, uh, you know, based on the last time you're here, we have these recommendations for you. So I, I look at Amazon and I, and I choose a book and I check out, it says, we have your credit card, it's no problem. And that's really very convenient for me. But what have I, what have I done in the, in the, what's the bargain in exchange? Is, is I've given up my, I've given up private facts Information is being gathered on you as you surf around the internet all the time and it's being given to advertisers so they can point their advertising towards you to products they think you might buy. There are laws that protect you but they tend to be in the United States what are called opt-out laws, meaning I have to opt out rather than opt in. When you read a Google privacy statement or an Amazon, I mean, there, no one ever reads them. We just say, do you, you always sign in and it says, do you agree? We go, I agree because we don't want to read it, it's six pages long, it's single spaced, it's, it's brutal to read. But that's what's happening and people have to recognize they're giving up a little privacy to have this convenience. Laptops get stolen very easily these days, they're very fungible and you leave one in a, in a library, you might be at the public library and have it sitting on a carol and think I'm going to be away for a minute. It'll be gone. A lot of people here at Montgomery College are provided with laptops and what we do is we provide them with locks so that when they're traveling and they're sitting somewhere they can lock their laptop literally to whatever piece of furniture they're working on and, and literally it can't be stolen that way. They have to treat their personal machines almost like currency. They're storing personal data about themselves on their machines and they have to think about them almost like a, a checkbook because they might have their credit card numbers on there, it might have checking account numbers, it might have social security numbers on there. And they have to think about it, would I leave my checkbook sitting out on the table? And most people wouldn't, but they might leave a laptop. Phishing is when I is a method of social engineering. It's what people in Russia or in Africa are doing is they may send out a million emails that purport to be from Chase Bank. And Chase Bank will go, uh, the letter will say, I'm from Chase Bank and uh, your account has been compromised and we need you to click on this link and enter your password and your user ID uh, so that we can make sure you're okay. And they'll send it out to a million people and I might get it and, and say, I don't have an account at Chase Bank. So I look at it and I go, I don't have an account at Chase Bank. But several people do. And so then they will click on the link and, and they may enter information and then the people in Russia or the people in Africa now have that information. They can go in, steal funds from your account and get out again. So they fish, they're fish. 
These people are only doing these schemes for two or three hours, but they might net five, six, seven million dollars because they're sending it out in so many places. Phishing is a, an email that appears to be from a reliable source that we think we can trust, and it turns out it's not. So what we're teaching people here at the college, both at the college and when they get away, is to scrutinize an email. Your bank will never ask for this kind of information. And if you get someone asking for it, you know it's fishy. To find out more about cybersecurity and how to safely protect your data, go to www.montgomerycollege.edu forward slash cybersecurity. Cybersecurity starts with you. You are the first line of defense against computer fraud and information piracy. Be smart, be aware, be the solution.